الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear brothers in attendance and viewers of Madani channel There are many Fadail virtues of reciting Salat ala nabi And we know through narrations that the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum ajma'een They were well aware of that They knew full well that reciting Duru Sharif is a means of attaining great barakat, blessings from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in one narration we find that Sayyiduna Ubay bin Ka'ab radiyallahu ta'ala an, he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I will spend all of my free time, all of my free time in reciting salat upon you. Reciting Duru Sharif upon you. Now the Prophet ﷺ didn't reply and said, I would advise against that, or you should do something else, or you should do a bit of Duru Sharif and spend your other time doing something else. No. The Prophet ﷺ replied to this request of the Sahabi who said he'll spend all of his free time. What it means by free time is after fulfilling the faraid, of course, whether that's salah or other obligations that are binding upon a person. A person, for example, if he runs the household, he has certain responsibilities, duties as well. So when he has fulfilled the faraid and the hukuq wajiba, the Sahabi says that I will spend all of my free time after that in reciting salat ala nabi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa subhanallah gave him glad tidings and said, that if you were to do that, if you were to spend all of your free time reciting Salat upon me, then this will be sufficient to remove your worries and have your sins forgiven. Two things have been mentioned. Number one, reciting Salat ala nabi abundantly will lead to your worries being alleviated. And secondly, your sins being forgiven. And these are two things, let's be honest, that every Muslim wants. And we know the problems that we're facing as an ummah and individually as well. People are living stressful lives, worried, concerned. And one way of removing those worries, those concerns, those issues and problems is by reciting Salat ala nabi abundantly. And secondly, our sins are also increasing daily, unfortunately. We are committing sins. But to have our sins forgiven, reciting Salat ala nabi is a powerful way. So inshallah ta'ala, whenever you have free time as well, try and spend it in reciting Salat ala nabi Make a habit daily that I will not go to sleep until I've recited X amount. And inshallah you yourself will witness firsthand the barakat, the blessings of reciting Salat upon the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. May Allah ta'ala grant us all tawfiq to do so. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, let's make some good intentions prior to listening to the bayan. Make the intention that you're listening solely to gain the ridad, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're here in the masjid or viewing the bayan from home with the intention of gaining sacred knowledge, ilm e Make the intention that whatever you remember from the bayan, you will try your utmost to act upon it, inshallah. Make the intention that you will also try to impart that knowledge to others. What you want for yourself, you should want for others. 
if you benefit through sacred knowledge, you should also spread that sacred knowledge as well, inshallah. And like this, whenever you get the opportunity to do a good deed, a pious deed, try and make good intentions beforehand, inshallah. Today I'd like to discuss an important aspect from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it's actually considered a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well. And it's not your ordinary sunnah that you hear. All sunnahs are azim, are great. But normally when we hear the word sunnah, automatically our mind goes towards using the miswak sharif, which is of course an excellent sunnah. It goes towards keeping a beard. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a beautiful and blessed beard. When we hear the word sunnah, we think about dressing in accordance to the sunnah placing kuhl and timini in the eyes, etc. These are all sunnahs. But the ulama say, the majority of these sunnahs that I've just mentioned are the external sunnahs. The zahiri that were apparent. And then there were many other sunan, sunnahs of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that related to his beautiful character. That related and were linked with his mannerism his characteristics, his mu'amalat, his blessed uh, way of dealing with people. So the Prophet ﷺ's sunnah has many facets, many aspects as well. One of those sunnahs that the ulama have highlighted in their books is the Prophet ﷺ's kamal, his perfection in terms of showing and displaying haya, modesty. The Prophet ﷺ was very modest. So inshallah ta'ala, we will listen and hear about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi modesty, his haya, and the dars, the lessons that we can take from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi in this regard. How can we implement it in our lives and how we can also adopt and attain the blessings of showing haya in our lives. First of all, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of creation himself bears witness upon the haya of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the modesty of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa In Surah Ahzab, para 22, verse 53, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Inna thalikum kana yu'zi nabiyya fayastahyi minkum. Translation, indeed, this matter of yours harms the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, he shows modesty before you. There's a whole background to this account that I won't go into this verse. But here the key point is that the Prophet ﷺ was modest before people. And one companion, Sayyiduna Abu Sa'id Khudri radiallahu ta'ala, he summed up the haya, the level of haya possessed by the Prophet ﷺ. He says, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was more modest than a virgin girl in her chamber. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very, very modest. And the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, whenever he would see something deplorable, something detestable, something wrong, you would be able to sense that from his blessed appearance, his blessed face. Because what would happen? Signs would become apparent on the noble face, which made people understand that the Prophet ﷺ does not like a particular act, a certain act. This was his level of haya as well. The Prophet ﷺ himself, throughout his life, he stayed away from indecency. He was far from immodesty. And the narration states, say the Aisha radiallahu anha is the narrator. She says that the Prophet ﷺ, neither spoke indecently nor immorally. His speech was pure, we know that. And nor did he shout in the marketplaces. She continues and she says, the Prophet ﷺ never repaid evil with evil. Rather, he would forgive. And say that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, who was the honorable wife of the Prophet ﷺ, she says that the, the level of haya possessed by the Prophet ﷺ was such that I, meaning Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha is saying about herself, never saw the Prophet ﷺ unclothed. 
I did not see the Prophet ﷺ unclothed. So we gain glimpses from these narrations about the haya of the Prophet ﷺ. And we also know from the shamail, the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, that when he would speak to someone, the Prophet ﷺ would not stare at their face. Although today the teachings are a bit different, we're taught from a young age, look at me when I'm speaking to you and maintain eye contact, etc. But when we look at the life of the Prophet ﷺ, when conversing with someone, he wouldn't stare at them. This was the haya possessed by the Prophet ﷺ. Now, some narrations in this regard, and I will mention a few accounts as well from our aslaf, who were embodiments of the Sunnah, and in particular this Sunnah of Haya as well. The first narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam said that Iman, faith, has a little more than 70 branches, 70 something branches. And one great branch of faith is modesty showing Haya. This hadith has been narrated in Bukhari, in Muslim, Nasai, Abu Dawood, and Ibn Majah as well. So the Prophet ﷺ declared Haya to be a great branch of Iman faith. But what does Haya mean? Some people may be confused. But what do we mean by modesty? Remember, modesty, Islamically speaking, from a shari aspect, refers to leaving certain acts, leaving certain detestable acts out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll explain this. Alama Baydawi rahimahullah ta'ala says, Al-haya'u inqibadun nafsi anil qabihi makhafat al dham Haya is for the nafs to refrain from qabih, detestable acts, makhafat al dham out of fear of rebuke. And just to clarify and expand on this, Allama Ali Qari Hanafi rahimahullah ta'ala, he explains Islamically from a shar'an point of view, from a shari aspect, what does haya mean? He says, haya is when a person ponders and reflects upon the vast blessings of Allah that have descended upon him. And then he realizes and he focuses on his own shortcomings. On the one hand, he is reflecting upon the great blessings, the numerous blessings of Allah upon him. Secondly, he is thinking about all of those shortcomings of his, those sins, those errors. And he is regretful. He is thinking, I don't even deserve those blessings. And out of this embarrassment, and out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person leaves those acts, wrong acts, and makes a promise to avoid them in future as well. So this is the shari aspect of haya. Haya isn't if somebody is asked to do something good and he says, I'm shy. That's not what we're referring to here. We're referring to leaving bad acts and deplorable, detestable, wrong acts. So if someone asks you to recite Quran, someone asks you to recite a Naj Sharif, obviously the person should understand whether you'll be confident enough or not. But it shouldn't be the case that every single time we say, oh, brother, don't ask me, brother, don't ask me. These are good things. If somebody is giving you an opportunity to recite uh, Quran, Naat, or do a good act, there you're not supposed to say, oh, I'm shy. No, we should overcome that. We should try and overcome that. And what we're actually discussing here, the Shari'i Haya, is if something bad is in front of you, or there's an opportunity, or a chance for you to commit a sin. And there out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you leave that act. You don't even go near it. Subhanallah, there's so many examples of this. Let me give you an account of one of our awliyaullah, rahimahumullah ta'ala. And he was famous by the name Sayyiduna Miski, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. And this honorable saint of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a khasiyah, an exclusive attribute of his was that his body would emit fragrance. Whenever Sayyiduna Miski, rahmatullahi alayhi, would come to the masjid, people sense that. 
people could sense that Sayyiduna Miski Rahmatullahi Ta'ala has arrived. Why? Because this blessed fragrance would emanate from him. One day, people asked him, he said, Huzur, Subhanallah, that fragrance that emanates from you, it must be the case that you spend a lot of wealth buying perfume, buying fragrance. And that's what we would expect if somebody came in and from a distance you can smell the fragrance they've applied. You'd think, oh, he's, he must have bought a really expensive fragrance. And hence why I can sense the smell from so far. Sayyiduna Miski, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, he was asked by people, you must spend a lot of money on fragrance. Sayyiduna Miski, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, he turned around and said, truth be told, I don't spend any money on fragrance. The curious, whoa, whoa, what kind of reply? We always sense and smell the fragrance coming from him. And Hazrat is saying that he never spends money on fragrance. They were curious to you know where it's coming from them. Where is this smell emanating from? How is it even coming about? Sayyiduna Miski. Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali explains and he says, My story is very astonishing. He says, I was a young boy. Allah had blessed me with husn beauty as well. Handsome young boy. And just like today as well, if there's a shy child, people say to the parent, father or the mother or your child is too shy you need to break him out of that shyness you need to make sure that he's not like that for for much longer whereas the innocence found in kids we should try and preserve that for as long as possible so Sayyiduna Miski Rahmatullahi Ali as a young child even his father's friends thought the same he said Uzur, your son now he's too shy what to do get him to work somewhere work experience He'll be interacting with people and this will open him up and benefit him. So his father said, okay, that's a good idea. His father got him a job, a shop. And once an elderly woman came, she purchased a few items. And the shopkeeper said to this young child, Sayyiduna Miski, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, that go and escort that woman home, take her items with her, go and assist her. He did as he was ordered. After all, he was employed there. He had to. So he's going home to this old woman's home. When he reaches the house, he sees a mansion. He sees a very grand house. He goes inside, room after room. And the elderly woman asks him to remain in a particular room while she, she goes and pays him as well. All of a sudden, whilst he's in that room, a young female comes and closes the door. And she only had one thing on her mind, Ma'adallah, to commit wrongdoing. Sayyiduna Miski, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala a very modest young individual. Imagine what was going through his heart. He says, I felt hopeless. What's going to happen? I'm going to fall into sin now. But look, people who are sincere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aids them. He says, suddenly, a thought came to my mind on how to get out of this situation. So he convinced that young girl. He said, let me just go to the toilet. I need to answer the call of nature. She permitted him. When he went to the toilet, Allahu Akbar, to get himself out of that sin, that indecent act, he defecated and then placed that defecation on his body. All over his body. When he opened the door and she saw this, she screamed. What is this? Look what he's done. And then she summoned the maids and she told them to get rid of him. So they wrapped him up in some sort of mat and threw him in a field. He says, I came to my senses, went home, purified myself, praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for saving me from that situation. And at night when I went to sleep, my sleeping fortune awoke. A very beautiful looking personality came into my dream. And that personality said to me that you resemble Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. Meaning, this was an indication towards the account of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam in the Quran. Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam and Zulaikha, and we know there's a full account in the Quran in Surah Yusuf. That you resemble, you have a similar trait to Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. In that he avoided sin, alayhi salam, and you have also done so as well. And what that 
beautiful looking personality did was stroke the body of Sayyiduna Miski in the dream. And he asked that personality, who are you? He was informed, I am Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salam. Sayyiduna Miski says, I awoke. And ever since that day, ever since that account, that incident and the dream, my body has begun emanating fragrance. So there is the answer to your question. That you're asking me how much I spend on fragrance, I don't spend anything. But this is my story, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through His mercy, I was able to save myself in a situation. The reward I got was that Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salam came to my dream, placed his hand over my body, and my body is emanating fragrance from that day. So dear brethren Islam, what do we learn? That haya, having a kamil haya, level of haya, this is necessary in that age and I would say even more so in this day. Why? Because we're constantly bombarded with filth. The opportunity to commit sin are a lot more. Fitan, tribulations are everywhere. Very difficult for people to protect their eyes, other limbs of the body as well. And those who are sincere, as you heard in this account, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a way out for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves them. And in one hadith we're told, that on the day of judgment, when there will be no shade apart from the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seven people will be granted the shade of the throne of Allah. One of those blessed people will be that youth, that young person who was invited towards sin by a beautiful woman from a lofty lineage. And he turned around and said, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he refrained from sin. As a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him shade under the shade of the throne of Allah on the day of judgment. So, haya is very, very important. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we heard, he was at the peak of haya subhanahu Let us hear more narrations, inshallah, in this regard. The Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said that indeed haya and iman are connected. Haya and Iman are connected. When one of them is raised, the other is raised as well. Meaning when one of them disappears, the other disappears as well. So somebody who commits acts of indecency, immodesty, then he cannot claim to have perfect Iman. It's referring to perfect Iman here. That the perfection of Iman is lifted the moment a person commits indecency and immodesty. So that's also a warning for believers to ensure that the Iman is not affected in this way. Listen to another narration. The Prophet wasallam said, I advise you to show modesty in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like you show modesty before a pious person in your community. What happens is when a reputable person a person with some rank, with some status, is before us, then we are mindful of our actions. We make sure we don't put a foot wrong. Or you may be in the court of a, a saint, a waliullah, a shaykh, and you refrain from saying anything wrong, doing anything wrong, you're very cautious. And here in the narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, I advise you, just like you show modesty there, show modesty in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Meaning, you could be alone, nobody is around you. There is a temptation to sin, temptation to do wrong. That is the true test now. That nobody is looking at you, no human being is looking at you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the Arsh is witnessing you. He is seeing your every act. Will you refrain from sin then? Or is it the case that we only refrain from sin when we are in the public eye, when we are before people, but privately? You know, we don't give any attention to this. So this is something that we need to focus on and be mindful of as well. Another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, anything that modesty enters, it beautifies it. Take for example, insan. If insan adorns himself with modesty, he's beautifying himself, embellishing himself. And the hadith states, anything that immodesty enters, it makes it defective. Now we have to question ourselves that 
Are we decorating ourselves, adorning ourselves with haya, with modesty? Or are we doing the opposite? Because the hadith is telling us what? The hadith is telling us to adopt modesty, to beautify ourselves and not do the opposite. But it's very, very unfortunate, very, very unfortunate. The ummah is being tested greatly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect and preserve all of us. In the past, it was difficult to commit sin. Yet people did. They will go to great lengths so that nobody finds out. Today, a person can be on his mobile phone, in his room, alone, in seclusion, and commit every sin under the sun. So with the advent of technology, there are many fawaid, no doubt. But what about the tribulations of using social media, media in general? This is something that we have to ponder upon. Now, in the past we used to say that make sure you do not befriend a bad person. Make sure your friend is pious. And even today parents do advise their children that don't mix with the wrong crowd. Make sure your friends rather are pious, God-fearing, sunnah abiding, they offer the salah, don't mix with the wrong crowd. And they even you know, point out so-and-so we heard about dead child, stay away. And it's good. We should look out for our children like that. But when have we ever said to our child, that, oh child, this mobile phone you have, this laptop you have, this iPad you have, make sure that does not become a bad companion for you. Because there nobody is physically with him or her. But what it is that this iPad can be a means of benefit for you or it could be a means of punishment and a witness against you. This is like a companion as well. Meaning if you spend most of your time on media, social media, then obviously you'll be accountable. What are you going on? What are you clicking on? What things are you watching? Are you listening to the Quran on there? Listening to Naj Sharif? Are you studying sacred knowledge online? If yes, Alhamdulillah. Thumma Alhamdulillah. It's very great. But if you're doing the opposite, people are speaking to the opposite gender. People are writing abusive language. People are doing all sorts of wrong, then definitely that will work against a person. And that's also been written down. You can't forget even for a moment that that is also being written down by the angels. Hiram and Katibin who are documenting our deeds, they are writing this down. So, again, social media, internet, it's a big test of our haya, our modesty. And people may delete their browser history. They may seem and think that they've gotten away with it. But remember, it's written. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not forget. La yadillu rabbi wa la yansa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never forgets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His knowledge is pre-eternal. So we have to make sure before we do a sin, or we're in a position where we might commit a sin, that my Lord is watching me. This is the mindset that we should have. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we heard in the opening few minutes of the bayan, how modest he was. He would keep his eyesight low. When speaking to someone, when conversing with someone, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi would not stare at them. And this was a way of protecting the eyes as well. And Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Ali Rahma, he emphasizes on creating a barrier of the eyes, meaning making an obstacle <coughs> before the eyes. Because the eyes are the ones that lead to temptation. Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Ali Rahma said, it's the eyes that are first deceived. Then the heart is deceived. It's led to temptation. First the eyes, we open that door, that avenue, we do not control our eyes. Then what happens? The heart is tempted. And then when the heart is tempted, lastly what happens? The person ends up committing sin. So it's very, very important that that first door, we keep it shut. And we place as many obstacles as we can before it. So, the bayan today was about haya, was about modesty. And this is also a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very modest. And those who remained in his company also picked up that blessed trait. Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiyallahu ta'ala an, was honored to marry two daughters of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, one after the other. 
And the Prophet ﷺ said, even if I had many daughters, I would give them all in marriage to Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala. Meaning this is the selection of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who can compare to that selection today? When it's time for our daughter's marriage, we are hopeful and we pray that uh, the partner that they are marrying is the right one for them. The one who will help them in the deen. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his judgment, his decision is the best from all of creation. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, even if I had numerous daughters, I would give them in marriage one after the other to Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala. So this was the excellence of Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan in the eyes of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was very modest and some of his titles, Kamilul Haya wal Iman. He reached the level of perfection in Haya and Iman. And we heard in the hadith that Haya and Iman are connected. When one of them raises, lifts, the other lifts as well. So we need to preserve both of them. Iman and Haya, they are linked. In Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala, he in, on one narration I'm summarizing, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting in a particular position and a companion walked in, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, other companions walked in, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained seating in the same position. When Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an, walked in, the Prophet alayhi wa sallam changed his position. And when asked the reason for this, the Prophet ﷺ said that even the angels ﷺ show haya before Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu. This was the level of haya he possessed. And we as ummatis of the Prophet ﷺ, we can only be true in our claim of loving him if we follow him. Once you have ita'at and ittiba'un nabi sallallahu alayhi wa that's when your iman will be kamil as well inshallah. So this is the advice for all of us that we need to adopt modesty, especially in this day and age, when there's so much indecency, so much immodesty, bombarding us everywhere you turn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant modesty to the males of this ummah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant modesty, haya to the females of this ummah as well. And for the sake of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and his kamil haya, for the sake of Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu an, for the sake of Sayyidina Yusuf ala nabi wa alayhi salatu wa salam, whose haya is renowned as well. May Allah Jalla wa ala fill our hearts with this haya so we don't even think about committing a sin. May Allah Jalla wa ala accept what has been said and enable us to act upon it. Ameen. Bijahin Nabi al-Ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam.